Box spring. So what we have here is another example of the use of the work energy theorem involving this time a spring. Here's the situation. We have a spring against the wall. Something about spring sticking out of walls. I don't know, but there it is. And there's a smooth surface here, meaning no friction. And we have a 1.5 kilogram block moving towards the spring at a speed of 2.2 meters per second. You know what's going to happen. The block is going to hit the spring, it's going to compress it. Some distance x. And for an instant, it's going to be still because the spring is going to push back and push the box back on out that way. No friction. Right? So the spring is going to move down and push it back out. What I want to know, what I want to know is what is the maximum compression of the spring X? How far does the spring compress before it pushes the box back out? That's what we want to know. Okay. So we need to think about the block and the forces on it, right? We're going to apply, as before, the, oops, great one here. We're going to use uh, work net equals delta K. We'll do the same thing we always do, folks. We're going to look at the left-hand side, work net. We're going to calculate it. We're going to write it out. Then we're going to figure out what delta K is. We're going to write that out and then we're going to take the two and set them equal. And we're going to be able to find X. What we know is that the block has a mass of 1.5 kilograms, moving a speed of 2.2 meters per second, and the spring has a spring constant of 475 newtons per meter. Now that, was, that spring constant is fairly large. Uh, it's not close to what you have in your car shock absorbers wise, but it's pretty big. And what that number means, folks, newtons per meter, what that means is if you take this spring and you compress it by a meter, you shorten it from its equilibrium length down and you compress it by a length of one meter. So whatever its equilibrium length is, you, you, you shorten it by one meter. It's going to push back with a spring force of 475 newtons. That's what 475 newtons per meter means. Okay? And this is the equilibrium position here. It's just chilling. It's just hanging out at its equilibrium position. We want to know how far it compresses before it pushes back. And we're going to use this baby right here, the work energy theorem, to do it. The same as we have done the last, last couple of examples in the video. So, what's the work net? Well, what are the forces acting on the block? Right. Let's think about the block. What are the forces acting on it? Well, before it hits the spring, there's only the normal force and the weight. And this displacement, D, right, is to the left. Neither one of these forces, the normal force or the weight, does any work. Why? Because they are perpendicular to the direction of the displacement, which is to the left. Normal force is up, that's 90 degrees from the displacement. Weight is down, that's 90 degrees from the displacement. No work is done by the normal force or the weight, ever. And while the block is moving along here, okay, there are no other forces acting on it. But once it hits the spring, there's a force acting on it, right? Once it hits the spring, there's going to be a force acting back this way. The spring force is going to push it back out. Now remember, it's still moving to the left. So the displacement is to the left forces to the right. Okay. So is the 
work done by the... So, let me just pause there again. As the block moves, it's moving to the right. It feels a force to the... I'm sorry, it's moving to the left. The displacement is to the left that way. But it feels a force, and this is the force responsible for slowing it down. The spring force pushes back that way. Okay, is the spring force doing positive or negative work on the block? Displacement's that way, force is that way. When a force is opposed to the displacement, the work is negative. So the work net, wait, was this uh, green? Yes. The work net is minus one half kx squared because the work done by the spring force is one half kx squared, but it's negative because the force is acting on the block to the right while the displacement is to the left. Those two are 180 degrees from each other. So when the force opposes the displacement, the work done by that force is negative. So the work done by the spring force here is negative. Okay. Earlier on, at the end of last video, when I said that this quantity is always positive, that was right. This quantity, as shown here, is always positive because k is always positive and x squared is always positive. But spring forces can do negative work, in which case you have to put a negative sign out in front of it. But that quantity, 1 half kx squared, is always positive. But when the work done by the spring, it, the work done on the block, okay, is negative, you have to put the negative sign out there. Spring forces can do negative work, okay, although this value there, 1 half kx squared itself, is always positive. So there's the negative sign. Okay, and again, the negative comes because the f spring force is opposed to the displacement. Okay. Once the block turns around and moves this way, the spring force will be to the right, the displacement will be to the right, and the spring will do positive work on the block. But while the block's moving one way and the spring force is pushing the other way, the spring is doing negative work. Okay, that's where the negative. That's where the negative sign comes from. Okay, so that's the left-hand side, and it's got the thing in it that we're looking for x. Right, what we want to know is what's the maximum compression of the spring? How far does it get compressed? Okay, so that's the left-hand side right there. Now let's look at the right hand. So the right, left hand side is done. Let's look at the right hand side. Delta K is K final minus K initial. What is K final equal to in this case? Right. Well, remember as you think about that, this can always be written one half MVF squared minus one half MVI squared. Okie doke. So again, what is KF equal to? This is the final situation here, right? This is final. This is initial. Right? This is VI. What is VF equal to? Zero. Because for an instant, the block is in motion. I mean, is the block is still as it's turning around. When the spring is at its maximum compression, at that moment, the velocity is zero. That's the final point. We decide that's what we're going to call the final position. Is the position that we want to know the maximum compression. Vf at that point, at that point of maximum compression, is zero. So delta k is simply minus one half mvi squared.
So here is the left hand side, and here is the right hand side of the work energy theorem. All we have to do is set those equal to each other. Let's do that. So we have minus one half kx squared equals minus one half mvi squared. Now you can divide both sides by negative one half, which is nice. and cancel all those negative one-halves. They're common to both sides. They can go away. Bye. See ya. So we get kx squared equals mvi squared. And we know everything. We know k given to us. We know m given to us. We know vi given to us. And we can solve this for x. All you have to do is divide both sides by k. Cancels the k on the left hand side. And we get x squared equals mvi squared over k. And then we need to find the square root of that. When you plug in your numbers and take the square root, you get x is 12.4 centimeters. Okay, and rounding to two significant figures because we have 1.5 and 2.2 over there, x is 12. Centimeters. Okay. What I want to leave you with here is two things. Number one, the way we solve problems using the work energy theorem. You evaluate left-hand side, put it in a box, underline it, mark it. Evaluate the right-hand side independently of that. You just figure out what that is, then independently of that you figure out what that is, do that, and then set them equal to each other. Second thing to remember is this negative sign business here. I'm going to write it up here. We have time. When a force is opposed, and we've seen this before in other, in every, not every other example, but in a couple of the examples we've seen before about work and about the work energy theorem, this has happened. I'm just making it explicit here. When a force is opposed, to the displacement, it does negative work. So the spring force did negative work here because the spring force was pushing out to the right while the displacement was to the left. Okay. Other way around is true too. When a force is in line, is is in the same direction as the displacement, it, is, it does positive work. I'm not going to write that down, out of interest of time, and I got no space left anyway. But I will say it again. Not only is this true that when a force is opposed to a displacement, it does negative work, but also when a force is in the same direction as the displacement, it does positive work. You can bank on it. It's true. Not making it up. See ya.